Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. You are part of the uh, almost 450 people worldwide who are registered to this webcast. This webcast is powered by your development, Nomad, System Plus, and it is dedicated to wireless technologies for 5Gs. My name is David Jordan, and I am Global Self Support and Coordinator for your development. So before we get started with this webcast, I would like to share with you a few information regarding logistics. So you have the possibilities during all webcasts to submit questions. So in order to do so, you simply have to use the box at the bottom of the screen with the label Ask a Questions. We will answer as many questions today as uh, time permit, and for the remaining questions, we'll make a follow-up with you by email. Concerning the material and all the contents from this webcast, please note that the presentation is already available in the resources section. You will also receive an email after the webcast with a link to the recording session. So today, your development, Nomade System Plus Consulting, will share their analysis for you on wireless technologies for 5Gs. First, let's start with a short introduction presenting 5G drivers, a use case presented by Cedric Malaka. He is a technology and market analyst at Joel Development, and he specializes in RF devices and technologies. Cedric, it's your turn. Okay, uh, thank you, David. So, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our webcast. So today, uh, your development system plus consulting and Nomad join their, their force to build this webcast. Uh, and we extracted the, the slide you will show on, uh, on, on this report from present report available and, and future report that will be built uh, in the coming weeks. So the first one just uh, is the 5G impact of the RF front-end module and connectivity for cell phone. Uh, first of all, uh, we all know the global, global mobile data traffic forecast is uh, increasing uh, so much. With the coming 5G, we all are questioning about the impact for RF front-end industry and what about the connectivity technology for cell phone market. Uh, okay, just to mention uh, from the VNI Cisco report, mobile data traffic is expected to grow uh, by 2021, 20% uh, 20 of the global uh, IP traffic will be mo mobile, uh, mostly 4G connection, but also 5G connection will start uh, by 2021, it will, it will be 1.5%. And another point which is important to note uh, is that 63% uh, of the global mobile data traffic will be offloaded to Wi-Fi or small cell. Among the, um, the, the mobile data traffic, the, the main application uh, angry for, for data is, the, of course, the video, uh, which is and will remain the main driver of the, of the data rate increase. So this is uh, the first motivation for upgrading the, the network is the global uh, data traffic forecast. Um, Ericsson predicts 75% uh, of use case will be video by 2023, confirming uh, TV market replacement by the mobile will continue. Among uh, all the 5G application, uh, you, you have uh, other application than the mobile. Uh, for instance, uh, the IoT application for connected homes, agriculture, industrial automation, and so on. The arrival of the VR and AR applications as well. Uh, robotic services, intelligent transport system, for instance, uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, sorry for this slide, the, the crew is not well uh, oriented. It is an issue with the platform, but this will be corrected on the report online. Um, so you can show on, on this 
plots, um, all these applications require different amount of data demand and reliability level, meaning the use of different frequency bands than different uh, technologies. So for the sub-6, uh, that will be support most of the enhanced mobile broadband uh, as usual, uh, with um, with more and more uh, carrier aggregation and those kind of things, which uh, make some pressure of the RF front end uh, design and structure. But also, uh, millimeter wave uh, will will also ne be necessary for extra uh, capacity uh, needed to support very demanding application, uh, such as, uh, for instance, uh, the DR and AR, uh, this, this kind of thing. Okay, thank you very much, Cedric, for this introduction. Once again, do not hesitate to ask questions in the chat box. We will continue with a patent landscape analysis from Paul Leclerc, patent and technology analyst and mail. Paul, it's your turn. Okay, uh, hello everyone. So the, the next part is uh, dedicated to the technology that will make um, the 5G revolution possible and the way we're going to dig into this technology is not through maybe more classical market analysis or reverse engineering technologies that you may be more familiar with but by analyzing the IP position and the um, patent landscape related to those technologies. So the next part will be focusing uh, on two technologies, so the RF front-end module and uh, the acoustic wave filter. And these results and data that I'm going to present you are uh, extracted from two pat different patent analyses that we've done at the end of two 2017. So if you look at the time evolution of the patent publication related to RF acoustic waves, you can see that uh, after huge growth in the beginning of um, the 17s and up to 2005, which is due to the development of smartphone technologies, there is a decreasing of the patenting activity of about minus 6.5% per year. And so um, the question is, is uh, in spite of the numerous frequency bands that are going to uh, happen in the 5G application, so for Cedric mentioned the sub-6 gigahertz, but also the 24, 28 gigahertz, that requires many filtering operation, uh, we cannot see a huge increase of the patenting activity, and that's something very uh, strange. Uh, and the question is why there is no sign of such evolution or such increase of the attraction, attraction of uh, filtering steps. And this uh, decrease also happened for both so technology, so surface acoustic wave technology, but also both technology. And uh, it's really strange uh, regarding the huge uh, attraction of 5G for uh, all um, the cell phone application. So if we look a little bit more into details uh, on uh, this IP landscape related to acoustic wave filter, what we can see is that if we look at so filter, so the most developed uh, IP landscape with the highest number of patents, and if we look at the uh, main IP player activity, uh, you can see on the graph the number of pending patents, so that is related to the most recent activity of this player uh, against the y-axis of the number of granted patents, so the real asserted technology. You can see here that Murata is leading by far the IP landscape with a very high number of pending ungranted patents and will be an uncontested IP leader for the next five years. And then you have a small competition which is starting to emerge, but not that important, between Skywalk and TDK. And I just remember that TDK is as a joint venture now with, well, with Qualcomm. So it's a small competition, but this competition will not really affect the IP landscape. And so this IP landscape is very settled, and there will be no major change in the next five years. So we, we don't expect any very big uh, event happening at the so fitter level. 
However, if you look now on the bow filter technology, which uh, address higher frequency in terms of filtering uh, operation, you can see that the landscape is very different and the evolution will be very uh, will, uh, will be very different with many changing in the next year. And then you have here two main uh, IP leaders, Broadcom and Tayoluden, that uh, have led the, the um, IP landscape for a couple of years. But as you can see, there will their patenting activity is a little bit into uh, is decreasing, and so um, their position is a little bit struggling. Uh, what is very interesting here also, uh, when I look, by looking at this IP uh, landscape, is the presence of newcomers like Acoustis, Resonant, or G Set that have entered the IP landscape in the last eight years. And that's very, that's very interesting because uh, so filter IP landscape doesn't have this kind of newcomers. And here in the bow filter, you have new commercials. That means there is new, um, there is people that try to uh, enter this landscape and to assert their technology in spite of the fact that there is very big and strong IP players that are set up for a long uh, couple of years. So it's very interesting to see new commercials because it shows a very dynamic uh, um, IP landscape. And then, the last thing that we, we can see here from this graph is that uh, there is a very strong competition between Qualcomm, Skyworks, and Carvo that really push and develop a high patenting activity related to bow filter in the last uh, year. And if you look at the, our prospection, you can see that these three, these three companies will be uh, very close to, from each other in, in the next in, the, in five years. And so there is a strong competition that is happening at the IP landscape regarding both filter. And this competition is also a, a witness uh, of uh, the attraction of both filter to address a sub six gigahertz application. And so you have a very strong competition and, and that means that these players are really uh, trying to race to, to this technology. And even something that is more interesting today is when you step back and take a look at a higher level, so at the module level, uh, and the RF uh, front-end module, what you can see here is that all the main IP players that I've presented in the previous slide uh, are exhibiting an increasing patenting activity related to uh, the front-end module. Uh, everyone but Broadcom, which uh, show almost uh, non-activity since 2012. But other than Broadcom, all the other players have shown a very interesting and an increase of the patenting activity related to the front-end module. And also what is very interesting, if, if you look at their recent patent publication, you can see that either, whether this is Murata, Qualcomm, or Skyworks, or even Corvo, there is a re real trend that goes from the device to the module on to uh, the question of how integrate the RF, uh, the device and here the acoustic wave filter into a RF front end module. And this is a, a trend that shows that today IP players are looking into uh, at a higher level in, a, in order to accept uh, their technology and invention, and instead of now just focusing on the component, they focus on the component, on how to uh, make a function uh, from this component, and how to integrate it uh, into the module. And so there is a development of the IP activity related to the RF module architecture, and that's something that we think that's going to drive the, um, the IP landscape in the, in the following years. Uh, which is really the focus on how to integrate all these uh, components uh, into a module. And that's uh, a really uh, interesting point to follow uh, regarding this IP landscape. And so um, to conclude about the, the, the IP landscape uh, regarding uh, the trend that we, we see uh, on acoustic wave filter and RF front-end module, what we can see is that the SOAR-related IP landscape is very well settled with Morata that is an uh, uncontested leader, and there will be no change regarding the SOAR feature in the, in the next five years. 
However, you have a strong competition that is starting between Corvo, Skyworks, and Qualcomm regarding the bulk acoustic wave um, related uh, patent landscape. And uh, this uh, race is, uh, is shown by the number of uh, fil uh, filing uh, patent related to this application, and these patents are filling worldwide, which we showed that really they're uh, willing, their will of asserting their technology and asserting their market position. And also something that is very recent but very interesting in terms of trend on IP dynamic is the increase of the RF front-end module related IP activity since 2010. And uh, this increase of the IP activity is uh, mainly due to the entrance of newcomers, so Chinese players, for example, like Oppo Mobile, but also the increased activity of the IP leader like Qualcomm, Water and Skywalk, which shows the really attractiveness of the IP domain. And so uh, really, to, if you have to remember one thing about this IP landscape analysis is that uh, the IP landscape is now led by the market leaders, which show that there is the, the, the IP landscape are very settled and these uh, IP players are engaged in a fair competition. And this competition happened at uh, the ball filter on RF module um, uh, on RF module component uh, in order to uh, assert their position regarding 5G application. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Paul, for this um, patent investigation overview. Let's go now to uh, the next presentation made by Stefan Elisabeth. He is project manager at the System Plus Consulting, and he will provide a technology overview of all the RF front-end modules. Stefan, it's your turn. Thank you, David. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Stefan Elisabeth, Coast Engineer at System Plus Consulting, and I'm in charge of RF, image sensor, and unknown packaging, uh, costing, engine, uh, costing uh, reverse costing. Sorry. And I will present some recent observation made by System Plus on RF front-end modules to see where we are going to 5G. So to begin with, I will present uh, the, the, the past arch architecture, uh, the, imp the imp implementation of uh, 3G communication has bring a quite simple architecture. Now today, uh, with the 4G communication implementation, we we have integrated uh, a more complex and more uh, wide uh, architecture, as described, a main, a main path with a PIM ID and a diversity, diversity path drive by diversity switch. This is, this is true for high-end uh, smartphone, of course. But in the future, how the 5G will be implemented inside our smartphone, which technology will prevail? I'll try to give you some clue in this presentation. So to get an overview of the main supplier market share, we analyze over 10 smartphone uh, and smartwatch front-end module, which has over 14 components. And uh, it's revealed that Skyworth seems to get the higher design win in the, in the smartphone industry panels from the high hand to the low hand followed by Broadcom, Rata, Corvo, and TDK, Epcos. All the front-end modules analyzed show two kinds of integrated filter technology for the sub-gigahertz communication. Uh, and the two, con the two technology has its own frequency domain. And as shown here, so filter as for the low-band application and both filter for the high-band. But with uh, new uh, new player coming, uh, like Resonant, for example, there is a hard competition on, on the, um, the mid-band uh, based on criteria like design, cost, performance, where the two, the two technology can compete. And these two, these two technology are based on different approach. On one hand, so features are based on acoustic wave propagation at the surface of um, piezoelectric. And as the technology uses surface wave, it's kind of limited by the interdigital transducer distance. But on the other hand, the both features use acoustic wave propagation inside 
inside the piezoelectric. And depending on the wave velocity inside the piezoelectric, the frequency propagation is linked to the piezoelectric thickness. So by doing so, um, in theory, uh, the technology has no limitation. And we can see that uh, we can split uh, the supplier with these two technologies, Skyworks, Morata, and Teleka Epcos for the saw manufacturing, and Corvo, Prodcom, and Tayuyuden for the bow manufacturing. And this last one is integrated in, uh, in the split, even if it doesn't have any front-end module. In fact, Tayuyuden is a third one uh, supplier for a front-end module manufacturer, uh, Skyworks. And with the decade course, also supplying the company with some saw filter in the low band uh, frequency, Skywalk is the only one manufacturer with uh, front end module production on all the frequency domain. Uh, TD Cape Coast is also supplying Corvo in the low band application, allowing the company to be on two frequency domain, low and high band, and with two technology applications, so and both filter. Finally, with in-house capability, we had uh, the three companies completed the, line, the landscape. So uh, in our uh, 2018 RF front-end modules report update, we analyzed over 10 smartphones, from the high-hand smartphone with large RF front-end module area, 6 to 400 millimeters square, with highly integrated system in package devices, to a low-hand smartphone with around 300 millimeter square and several um, discrete filters. And uh, as a first result of our analy analysis, here is some direction taken from by the several analyzed uh, OEMs. As expected, the diagram shows that high-hand OEMs have the potential to afford fully integrated solution with a major part of the RF area allowed to PIM ID. Uh, the smartwatch is a separated case with a full PIMAD solution that could come from uh, Apple's requirements. For the smartphone part, uh, we can see that diversity, diversity modules are the second place in the technology share, and it's increasing uh, compared to 2017 uh, reports. And as the diversity modules increase, uh, the SO filter share also increases in the smartphone. Uh, we can see that in high-hand smartphone, integrated filter are two times higher than low-hand, reaching almost 15 uh, filter uh, integrated inside modules for Apple, for example. And the more OEMs seek for uh, more integrated uh, LT band compatibility and reduce PCB footprint, the more filters are added inside the modules. And uh, today, the main trend uh, in high smartphone is to integrate more and more. In the iPhone 10 application, uh, Apple has two versions with two different approach uh, with the same um, supplier, Broadcom. Um, on, um, um, on one hand, we have uh, two separated modules and uh, another, another with a mid and high band front end in one uh, integrated in one modules. The huge drawback uh, of the integration of all-in-one uh, is uh, the increase of the footprint, over 22% uh, of increase, but with, with three uh, non-negligible uh, advantage. By keeping the same amount of filter, they could integrate IPD, uh, IPD inside the modules, and they reduce also the number of in-out pins. Doing so, they reduce uh, the communication, the, the link uh, between modules, and they increase the performance of the of the mod, of the front end modules, and all, and finally to to manage the electromagnetic interferences, uh, Broadcom chose to integrate several shielding solutions. Uh, the SIP is fully externally uh, metallized and grounded, with internal ground uh, wire bonding to shield the critical uh, dies, for example the IPD. Um, and also Skyworks has also uh, some improvement uh, in terms of packaging. As the diversity switch are adopted, uh, they try to, to integrate more and more uh, to, to provide uh, um, 
a small form factor uh, solution. And um, like Broadcom, uh, they integrate uh, internal and external shielding by using uh, wire bonding and uh, metal uh, sealed uh, packaging. But another improvement from Skyward is the integration of the IPD uh, outside the SIP in a, a kind of face-to-face -face configuration that, that is completely isolated from the, from the filters. And finally, what can we expect it from now toward 5G application, uh, implementation? Uh, the main challenges will remain the packaging. As we know, Qualcomm is working hard toward the technology implementation and will be a hard competitor in this, uh, this field. And knowing that 5G uh, will work in millimeter wave frequency domains, we can see what, uh, what are now available and what could be applied to 5G SIP. And here there is the WIGIG uh, devices working at 16 gigahertz from Qualcomm and it is a, a highly integrated double side molding uh, SIP that is integrated in uh, two working uh, devices. One in uh, industrial application integrated in a router and one uh, already integrated in a consumer application in the mobile devices. And of course, a system plus uh, will follow the technologies and will write the history through its reports. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Stefan, for this uh, interesting and in-depth technical view inside a different uh, flagship smartphone. Now we will finish with uh, the presentation of Cedric. Cedric uh, will add some valuable information on this topic before we end the webcast. Cedric, it's your turn. Okay, thank you, David, and thank you uh, also, Stefan, for providing uh, all these interesting information. So, as everybody knows from the well-known Shannon equation, uh, network technologies upgrade is, uh, is supported by several key technologies. So, first is the network densification which will uh, provide uh, average data rate improvement from uh, every uh, user uh, through, the, through the implementation of small cells, for instance. Um, and also another point is um, every slice of radio band has to be optimized to get the most of it. Uh, so for to, 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 to manage this, uh, this improvement in terms of spectral efficiency, two uh, schemes are being employed. So the first one is the high order of modulation. So the, the QAM uh, today, 256 QAM is the most common uh, modulation scheme. It, it will re remain, uh, I guess, for a while. And the second one is the MIMO technology, which is employed uh, two by two uh, to transmit two receive paths, but uh, now, uh, four by four is well employed as well by uh, most of the most of the players. Uh, finally, the, um, the last one uh, is is about the bandwidth available. Uh, so to to achieve more bandwidth, uh, two solutions exist. So one is to get more spect more spectrum uh, spectrum allocation. Uh, especially through the new radio bands sub six gigahertz and also the millimeter wave which is coming uh, right now. But also uh, the, the path that is well, uh, well followed is the carrier aggregation, uh, which is the, the current mainstream technologies to improve the bandwidth and the capacity network. Um, okay, uh, about the carrier aggregation, the MIMO technologies, um, you can see here a picture of the modem capability uh, on those two technologies. So it uh, depicts the data rates uh, capable uh, that, that the modem can, can handle as a function of the component carrier um, and also as a function of the MIMO technology. So yesterday, uh, we um, people built uh, two free component carriers uh, using 2x2 or 4x4 MIMO, 
uh, on one carrier. Um, and on the current uh, flagship phones, uh, we can find uh, we can find products uh, that capable of, of stacking five carrier component carrier, and my move four, four by four on, on three component carrier and three of the main uh, modem supplier, Qualcomm, iSilicon, and Intel provide a um, device capable of handling those kind of things. For the next generation of phones, uh, it is expected that uh, this trend will, uh, will follow with seven component carrier expected and uh, my move four by four on five component carrier. So this is for the carrier aggregation and the MIMO as well, uh, four by four. The, the QAM as expected earlier, uh, certainly will remain uh, 256 QAM uh, as uh, since the third uh, modern generation. Uh, an additional path sh should be, could be the millimeter wave technologies that come uh, as a disruptive technology to tra uh, traditional carrier aggregation scaling, um, and it is currently developed by modern vendors, but also uh, carriers are looking uh, very uh, far away at, at it. Um, and this could be uh, a view in the next uh, generation, future generation of onset as well. Okay, another point, uh, the LTE network uh, is evolving, but uh, also um, the, the technology, the Wi-Fi technology is, evolu is evolving uh, as well and is accelerating. Uh, it now can manage multiple user cases and theoretical uh, reach above a, gig a gigabit uh, per second of downlink speed. Uh, analogy with the front end is noticeable with the use of the sub-6 for the Wi-Fi 11A and 11AX, but also uh, on the millimeter wave side with the 60 gigahertz we gig technology, uh, those two technologies complementing each other. Okay, here is an overview of the market forecast for the RF front end component market. Uh, so 10 years forecast. Um, you can see on this overview, uh, the, the onset market is, uh, is uh, consolidating of the 4G device up to uh, 2019, and the introduction of the 5G device will appear uh, in 2019 as well uh, with the, the sub-6 gigahertz uh, technologies. And um, also the, um, the first 5G millimeter wave device will appear in 2019. Um, okay, the overall uh, front-end market uh, value is expected to reach uh, 30 million by 2023. Finally, this is a view of the RF front-end ecosystem complexity, which is depicted. Um, all the players among the supply chain are, are moving very fast to consolidate and strengthen their, their position. Uh, onset maker adopt more and more integrated modules, as uh, Stefan explained earlier, um, and are closer to IC design chip maker than ever. Modem and transceiver providers uh, are positioning the millimeter wave technologies. Uh, to try to enter uh, the, the front-end module as well and to disrupt uh, this ecosystem, supplying uh, high um, data rate uh, solution with different technologies. Uh, the traditional front-end module uh, supplier work closely with OSAT and new entrants uh, such as Qualcomm are building new fabs also to, to prepare uh, the sub-6 market entry. Um, another point uh, on the RF component stage, uh, the competition is intensifying and cooperation is opening as well in the meantime. For instance, the filtering market, uh, as depicted by Stefan and Paul earlier, is really quite complex with so and low technology uh, competing uh, and trying to, uh, to get the most of the market uh, share. And the um, uh, uh, last point, uh, 
I wanted to mention uh, a parallel supply chain could also emerge with highly qualified companies such as Resonance, uh, providing IP and filters to PA companies, uh, allowing it to build a PAMID offer at a competitive cost. Okay, thank you for attention. Uh, any question, please ask, and we will be pleased to support. Thank you very much, Cedric. Thank you all for your relevant presentation. We are now going to wrap up with a Q&A session. We will answer uh, as, many, as many questions as time permits, and we'll follow up via email for the remaining ones. The first question is for you, Cedric. What frequency band is most likely to happen in the micro, I'm sorry, in the millimeter wave regime? Okay, thank you for the question, David. Um, from my understanding, uh, millimeter wave is a differentiating technology for service provider. Uh, we, we saw really in the, in the you know, recent events that uh, carriers such as AT&T or Verizon in the US acquired license in 28 and 39 gigahertz band through company acquisition. Uh, for fixed uh, wireless access. But um, also, uh, people like T-Mobile, uh, carrier like T-Mobile on some spectrum is the 28 gigahertz band. Uh, you, you also have from Korea uh, uh, a 28 gigahertz uh, auction that will open uh, June this year. Um, and also on the, um, on the Japanese uh, market, NTP Docomo, uh, completed trials uh, mainly on the 28 uh, gigahertz uh, frequency. So for, for, to answer the question, I think the main focus uh, today is on the 28 gigahertz uh, right now, um, while uh, for for, for US and, uh, and Korea and Japan, uh, while for the Europe and China, uh, up to now, the focus mostly remain on the sub-6, but uh, 26 gigahertz bands most likely to be used in Europe within two years. But uh, just uh, the, the main uh, frequency band that should be uh, used today will be the, the 28 gigahertz for sure. Okay, Thank you. Think. Next question. Thank you very much. The next question for Paul. Uh, what um, IP activity seems to be low compared to the other player uh, in what you presented? Can you comment about Broadcom current IP strategy and position? Uh, well, uh, tricky question here. Um, yeah, in fact, Broadcom IP position is quite interesting. Um, because Broadcom have a very broad, uh, wide IP portfolio. Uh, this technology is very, uh, also is very well known, and he has strong uh, patents with very um, key patents regarding this technology. Uh, however, this I, its IP, IP activity has really decreased uh, over the last eight years, and today. Really, we don't see any activity from Broadcom. Uh, also, regarding uh, different uh, reverse engineering we've performed, we don't see any change in their uh, technology uh, and in their product. So, really, it's a, Broadcom is a is a question mark. Uh, either they 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 have changed or switch uh, their their the strategy to another domain, which may be possible, or they are doing something on the ground. Um, but Broadcom's IP activity is at, uh, it, in a standby mode for now, and uh, really we, we don't have any clue or any, any information or, or trend that can, that can show uh, an evolution or uh, an increase of, of their patenting activity uh, in the coming years regarding uh, either the acoustic wave filter or uh, the uh, front-end modular. 
architecture. So really, it's a, it's a big question mark, and we don't have uh, uh, any very specific answer up to now. We, we have to wait until they, they, they find new, new patent invention. Thank you very much, Paul. Next question is for Stefan. How do you envisage the RF front-end evolutions in the next few years? Um, okay. Um, so uh, about the front end module, as we we managed to 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 make a two two different reports for so the 2017 and the 2018 uh, version of the RF front end module inside the smartphone, we can see what what can what kind of trend uh, the, the the OEMs are, are taking. Um, for example, for the high hand uh, manufacturer, we can see that. Um, uh, they use more and more PIMID, and it's uh, it's spreading uh, throughout. Uh, I think mid hand uh, mid hand um, manufacturer, but for the low the, for the low hand uh, um, manufacturer, it's definitely uh, to, to, to um, uh, a solution uh, too costly to 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 to, to work with. Um, but we have seen that, uh, for example, Xiaomi. Uh, Try to integrate more uh, integrated modules, but without uh, any uh, duplexer inside. Uh, they, they came from um, a, a completely separated uh, solution last year to uh, PIMID, PI, PI, just PIM uh, from um, from Avago, for example, and um, antenna switch from 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 uh, RF, RF, RF MD. So I think uh, we, we, we will move to, toward an uh, integrated solution, but uh, we, we will still have a separated uh, domain between high-hand and low-hand uh, manufacturer. Thank you, Stefan. Next question for Cedric. Do you see 8x8 eight eight MIMO coming in the handset? Oh, okay, thanks you, David, for the for the question. Um, eight by eight MIMO is a is a technology uh, as explained that should uh, enhance the the data rate, but this will certainly enter the premise equipment market, but um, certainly not in the mobile. Mm, there is uh, several reasons for this. Um, first is uh, I think we cannot take advantage of it 100% uh, of the time, uh, even in dense uh, urban area. Um, so the, the radio cost benefit uh, should not be good enough to to pay for 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 this technology in the mobile phone. Um, Okay, it's not easy to find uh, eight available stream uh, to to work with it. Plus, uh, I think there is a lack of space for it in the handset, uh, which uh, is already uh, filled with uh, eight to ten antennas. Uh, the trend is more uh, now uh, on the antenna sharing with the Wi-Fi and LTE share uh, antenna, those kind of things. Uh, not add uh, another uh, another amount of antenna. Um, I think it only makes sense uh, for the millimeter wave part uh, with the beamforming management, but um, this will not be uh, the same kind of antenna uh, for the millimeter wave. Uh, you, you will have dedicated uh, antenna, patch antenna, linked to the, to, the, to the transceiver that will deal the millimeter wave. Uh, and this would be a different circuitry for uh, from the front end um, that is typically typically currently used in the in the front end. Um, one other thing uh, is the um, dual connectivity uh, brought by the 5G uh, with um, let's say fat band new radio bands. Uh, that would be uh, encored on the LTE one. Um, 
certainly will bring uh, the same benefit at a lower cost uh, from compared to adding uh, different paths to the uh, to, to the front end. This is my opinion. So. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Cedric. Well, uh, last question. Uh, do you see any future litigation to come in the acoustic wave filter or in the RF front end module domain? Uh, okay. Um, we never really know if there will be a, a litigation that happen, but um, looking at uh, the different uh, player or main player aggressiveness, and uh, the different uh, litigations that happened in the past. What what we see in these two landscape is that uh, uh, on the so filter, most of the there, is, there were not many uh, cases. Uh, even Murata, which has a, a very high number of of granted patents, hasn't uh, been very aggressive, and uh, there is uh, there hasn't been many litigation, at least. Uh, uh, in, in our knowledge, on that went public. Uh, regarding the bow uh, filters, I think Broadcom is a little bit more aggressive, and because, as I said, there is a strong competition uh, that is coming, there will be more chance. Uh, but uh, now it's, there is so many uh, different architectures and so many uh, different technologies that uh, it could be difficult. Um, however, what uh, could be very dangerous and some player that has started to also uh, enter the IP landscape are patent trolls. For example, uh, Intellectual Ventures has bought uh, several patent families from uh, Avago Technologies, uh, I think, six years ago. And uh, the competition, the attraction of the 5G, may lead uh, to some action from from this uh, patent troll uh, in, in in the future so um, I, I don't see mm, i don't see a main ip player involved in patent litigation patent litigation sorry um, very in the coming year but uh, there is still some very important trend uh, trend uh, sorry uh, important uh, risk from the patent troll and, for example, intellectual venture is one of them. Okay, thanks. We have a question for Stefan. Will the first 5G phone have a separate path or will they have integration with uh, 4G LTE? And in case of separate path, do you see discrete or module component? Oh, thank you. Okay. That's quite a nice, uh, nice question from Infineon. Um, in my opinion, I think uh, for the first integration, uh, it could be a separated path. As we know, uh, the, the whole the manufacturer is working on, on the system in package to, to integrate a passive or uh, inside the, 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 the substrate or uh, also glass, uh, glass substrate uh, to, to, to be used in, a 4, in 5G. Um, I think, uh, yeah, the, it will be in modules uh, and separated for the first, in the first part. After maybe uh, it could be integrated as the um, EME, uh, EME um, uh, shielding uh, will advance. But yeah, I think my, for my opinion, it will be modules and separated uh, paths. Okay, thanks. So let's take a uh, last question for all our speakers. We have uh, over 40 questions, so we will answer the remaining questions uh, by email. So last question for Cedric. How do you see the new radio band implementation in the handset? Uh, okay, it's a tough question. Um, Right now, this is 5G non standalone uh, implementation that is happening. Um, that means uh, sub-6 new radio uh, bands are anchored on the LTE-1. This is the dual connectivity. Um, 
this uh, way of doing will enable leveraging LTE spectrum uh, acquired by, uh, by the carriers. Um, and I think this is the way uh, new radio bands would be implemented in, in, the, in the near future. Um, this will, uh, uh, again, uh, increase the complexity of the front end, which is already quite complex uh, right now uh, because of the new path to be managed. Uh, but um, I, I think um, today with a carrier aggregation uh, rising, uh, this case, uh, aggregating the new radio bands on top of the LT1 will be the, will be the way uh, that um, that people will, will pursue. Um, for the new radio millimeter wave implementation, uh, this would be a different thing. So uh, Stefan told a little bit uh, just a question before. But um, I think this, uh, this uh, new radio millimeter wave bands will uh, require a separate path uh, from the transceiver. Uh, specific antenna uh, and also specific challenges to be solved, uh, such as, uh, for instance, the radio links uh, that have to be maintained between the base station and the device uh, for non line of sight uh, case or, um, or long range uh, communication, those kind of things. And also, um, one of the important, important points to, to look at is the power consumption of the device. Uh, because of the, of the power uh, available in the onset, which is not so not so huge. So um, again, this uh, this millimeter wave uh, technology implementation uh, will look quite different from what we know for, from the front end uh, industry. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Last question for Paul. You mentioned the increasing activity of Chinese players. Can you give us more information about uh, who they are and, and their technology? Um, yeah, I, I'll try. Uh, yeah, indeed, we among the, the among the, the newcomers that, has, that have entered the IP landscape. Over the last eight years, there is many Chinese players. Uh, I think it's maybe due to the activity of Huawei and ZTE, ZTE that have really uh, brought uh, many Chinese players in, into their uh, into this uh, kind of technology. Um, it's difficult to answer. There is, for example, uh, most most of the newcomers are. In the air front end module IP landscape, uh, I think because it's something that is most that is most uh, that is new and there is more white spaces. Uh, for example, Oppo has started to uh, to find uh, patterns related to air front end module. You have also uh, LiWiTech that have uh, started to find some patterns related to the front-end integration in their transceiver. Uh, RDA microelectronics are also uh, entering this landscape. So th there is a lot. There is also a lot of university. Uh, and uh, most of them are, are really entering the, the front-end module IP landscape. Uh, regarding the acoustic wave filter, um, I think they most of all, most of them really enter uh, by looking at both technology. I mentioned G sets uh, that has patenting, I think, about 20 invention um, regarding the packaging of the bulk acoustic wave uh, filters. Uh, um, there is also a company from Jensu Electronic Technology, uh, microchip technology also that has entered the, this landscape, but. Um, it is really difficult because, the, as Cedric mentioned it's in his uh, last slide, the environment is very dense. Uh, it's moving a lot uh, between front end to components, and there is a lot of links. Um, and the Chinese are also pet finding a lot of, lot of patterns. But the one I mentioned, so Oppo, LiWiTech, uh, RDA, 
and uh, microchip technology are, are among the, the the players that has uh, filed uh, numerous patents in the last year. And uh, I'm sure there will be more to come, and it will become more and more uh, dense and complex uh, environment. Thank you very much, Paul. So the, that was the last question. The webcast is now ended. So just to remind you, you will get uh, an email uh, in, the, in the next 24 hours where you will have a link to the recorded session of um, this webcast. So feel free also to share those, the presentation or the video with, uh, with your colleagues. You can find on our imacronews.com website more information on our uh, reports and the latest news of the industry. If you still have a few questions, uh, you can still send them to uh, our colleagues. You have uh, all the contact details on the slide that is uh, currently appearing in the webcast. So thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for all the presenter. Feel free to, to contact us um, by email if you, if you need. And have all a good day. Thank you very much.